This is the Battle of Jerusalem. It was fought in 1099 AD between the Crusaders of the First Crusade and the Egyptian defenders of the city of Jerusalem. The Crusaders' army was about 11,000 foot soldiers, mostly dismounted knights, about 1,000 knights, and some archers. The Crusaders' main objective was to take the, to take the city with, his, with the least number of casualties. The leader of the Crusaders in this battle was Raymond of Toulouse for the French and Godfrey of Boleyn for the Holy Roman Empire. The Crusader force consisted of mostly dismounted knights and, a couple, and um, some spearmen and some archers. After the many great travels um, through the Holy Land to, to get to Jerusalem, many Crusader knights didn't have horses because they were um, the horses were killed or destroyed. In battle, so many of them fought dismounted in this battle. And this battle took place early in the morning, so the Egyptians um, only had archers on the walls, the rest of their forces were in the middle of the city, and the Egyptian general, who was also the governor of the city of Jerusalem, tried to um, rally them and get them out as fast as they, can, as they could. So this is pretty much why there are only archers on the walls. And the siege towers they constructed them from ships that they that they used to trans to go go to the Holy Land. Now most of this battle is historical. The attack by the Crusaders came from the Tower of David, which was the which from biblical times was the strongest defense in Jerusalem. And um, as you can see, the dome, the mosque in the background, that is supposed to represent the dome of the rock. And the city is pretty much laid out like any city in the Holy Land of that time. The Egyptian army consisted of about 200 archers, 300 spear militia, 200 dismounted Arabian cavalry, and, and some and about 200 mounted cavalry. Now you can see the Crusaders are uh, attacking the walls, and they've just broken through the gates. Like I said before, this battle was early in the morning, so the uh, so the Egyptians were just waking up pretty much. So the Crusaders had a slight advantage of getting into the city easily. As you can see, this city is not historically Jerusalem because there are like um, little spots of water. And everything, as you can see, it's not a perfect battle, but this also gives you a little hint of how battles back then were fought with the Crusaders attacking the walls and attacking the archers. So, about here, the Crusaders are advancing upon the walls, and the Egyptian archers are starting to fight back, but they're no match for the dismounted knights. Here you can see the close-up. This game is actually very vivid and um, realistic. And right now, um, the archers are forming up to try to stop the Egyptians who are coming down the one narrow street you can see to try to hold the city. And you can see the Egyptian archers routing in the background. And the dome, and the big mosque in the background is the Dome of the Rock, which is the most holy, um, which is is one of the most holy um, Islamic sites in the, in the in the religion. As you can see here, um, Egyptian spearmen are starting to come down to attack the crossbowmen of the Crusaders. And the rest of the Crusaders are coming through the main gate in the background. And the knights are being, this is not hi, not really historic because they didn't have that many knights, but the knights are being sent around to try to fight them. And the rest of the main force is just running in to take the center of the city. see here um, the Egyptian defenders are putting up a hard fight even though they route quickly and they get back to the sound to the center of the city they realize that it's their home and they have to defend it so they stop from routing and then they come back
now you can see the knights charging up the side of the city trying to get to the center to try to outflank them but the Egyptians send a small unit of spearmen which are very effective against knights on horses since the spears just go right through the horse's armor and back here the rest of the knights on the walls are just trying to defeat the, the remaining Egy Egyptian archer forces. And now the main force of crusaders are inside the city and are trying to get to the center but facing some Egyptian resistance. And here comes the general which in, in this battle in this game would be Godfrey of Berlin trying to help his knights who are being destroyed by the spear militia helping them to um, Get, get their morale back up so they will fight on. And as you can see as the general approaches the Egyptian spearmen rout and the knights are able to move on. And the crossbowmen were very effective in this battle for the crusaders once they were inside the city because they were able to because they were able to um, easily pierce through the lightly armored Egyptian defenders. And um, the water in this battle that you that you just saw, it's not really historic. It was just this was the best city I could probably I could find that would be like an exact re replica of the city of Jerusalem. So I tried my best. But As you can see, the city is not laid is pretty laid out. It's laid out pretty much the same way. It's just that um, the mosque is. He as you can see, the mosque doesn't have, um, it has pillars on the side, which it doesn't resemble the Dome of the Rock, but it's a big, it's a big mosque, so I think it's pretty accurate. As you can see, the Egyptian defenders on the wall are still, um, putting up some resistance. Well, the main Egyptian forces in the center are starting to rout and lose hope. Oh, well, the general and the rest of his knights are moving remains. around the side to attack the center. And the center, f at since the Egyptian defenders rushed, rushed all of their force down the center, they only left the cavalry to defend the center, which is where the knights are really useful, because Egy Egyptian cavalry isn't that, doesn't have that much armor or experience, while the knights were pretty much the most powerful fighting force back then. You can see, um, there are, this game is also not um, size accurate, Battles back then were had much more soldiers in a unit. Right now, um, as you can see in the battle, um, the uh, Crusaders have about 60 men in their infantry unit and about 30 in their knight unit. You can see um, the unit of cavalry you just saw would have been the governor of Jerusalem, who, who acted as the Egyptian general in this battle. So as you can see, the knights are trying to, trying to do their best to cut through the other the cavalry but they're also facing some spearmen resistance like I said before when the when they when the Egyptians rout when they get to the center which you see right now they stop routing and come back to fight another day well to f well to fight on so as you can see um, it's a bad position for the Knights right now the battle is very much in our favor if we remain true and steadfast victory will be ours As you can see, um, this isn't a, this is kind of historical that um, the knights retreated because they were so outnumbered and they and they pretty much let the infantry do the rest of the battle. And this and the factions I'm using are the Egyptian faction, which you can see by their by their um, brownish flag and brownish uniforms. That th their units are historically accurate, but the Crusaders I use the Kingdom of Jerusalem faction to try to. Rep to, to try to make a replica of the Crusaders state of the Crusaders. You can see if you haven't recognized already, the Crusaders are the ones in the white with the white flags, and the Egyptians are the ones with the black ones. And usually in a real city back then, the center of the city would have buildings in it and like a palace for the governor. But this is pretty much just um just the main center like has nothing in it. Here you can see the General of Crusaders, Godfrey of Bullion. Um, sorry if I pronounce his name wrong, I'm not 
I don't really take German, which is what his name is pronounced in. So I apologize for that. And right now he's trying to he's trying to get the morale of his infantry up so they can easily so they can easily cut through the Egyptian defenses. Since the battle was mostly spearmen for the Egyptians, had mostly spearmen infantry, it they're effective enough to defend the city, but not to be in a real organized army. The, Crus the Crusader army had years of experience and training since most of their force was dismounted knights. The Egyptians pretty much were just men who were just called out at the last minute to defend their city. And um, the Crusaders actually suffered more casualties than the Egyptians in the actual battle because they only attacked from one side of the city, which was the Tower of David, which, what I said before, was the strongest defense point of the, of the city that they could have attacked from. As you can see, um, the wall force has pretty much been el eliminated now, and the forces are sent back to hold the towers. The Egyptians objective in this battle was to hold the city itself because they were um, they were waiting for reinforcements from Egypt but it, as you can probably see they never came so um, they were just holding out as long as possible and the Crusaders wanted to get in the city as much as possible so they just rushed it instead of having any tactical strategy okay so here you can see the um, the rest of the Egyptian cavalry, infantry, and archer defenders are still trying to hold out, but they're heavily outnumbered. They have ice in this game right now. They have about 50 to 75 men left, and the Crusaders still have about 400, 500. Historically, though, the battles were unknown. The casualties for both sides were pretty much unknown for during the phases of the battle since back then battles weren't recorded that much and now here you can see the Egyptian governor and defender has just been killed oh, so the, the, the Egyptian forces general. start to rout now since their leader has been killed running back to the desert. and victory is the Crusaders have won a nice victory once they take out the rest of, of the defenders and after this historically they destroyed most of the buildings just took all um, the artifacts out of them. They, they, um, they killed pretty much every Muslim men, women, and children in the city. Most of them, pretty much. And other religions like um, Christian, like non-Catholics and Jews, were deported. The they were allowed to leave the city, but not take any of their possessions. It shows the total wrong way to commence a battle by just attacking from one side of the city instead of going for all sides and just holding them out as a siege because if they held them out as a siege they would have been starved and their numbers the Egyptians would have been depleted and starved and the Crusaders just went straight head on in this battle and um, I think it teaches you about history that don't that many commanders have just rushed quick into battle if they have superior forces but you don't really want to because if you have if you have superior men, but you still have you're still you're still um attacking someone. You need to have um, a strategy on how to defeat them. And pretty much here, there was no strategy at all. And pretty much after this battle, um the Crusader states were established, and um, the first crusade was over, and many Crusaders returned home feeling that they have that feeling accomplished that they have captured the holy city of Judah.